Infinity 3, how to create an abstract raised image like this. Super easy, PC or Mac. Let's go back to the original document. I've got this lovely scene of Christmas. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this layer because I can then combine them. I can merge them later as well. But let's just go over here and right click and duplicate. That's in the layers panel. So I've now got two of this. What I'm next going to do is apply a blur effect and it could be any blur effect. To do that, I'm in the pixel studio. Just go over here to pixel, filters, and you go to blur. And there's a whole range of them. They've got bloom, etc. I'm going to go with this one, lens, but you can select any of them. Great thing about lens one, it's great for creating obviously these lovely highlights here. You've got all the various baubles, etc. glow even more. And you can modify a number of blades, etc. And then click apply. Just want a slightly blurred image, not totally blurred. So now I'm going to apply an image trace. I'm going to turn it into a vector. So go over here. With this selected, I can go to vector and down to image trace. So image trace comes with a limited set of commands, options, I should say, and image trace. And you can see you've got here edge threshold. I'm going to go for the lowest, 0%. And image is never great. You can often see that you barely make it out, but it's still there. You can still see the structure. And also you can modify the setting here. I'm just pushing it up to about 100%. And with that, I'm going to click apply. And that just creates lots and lots, quite a few curves. And you can see that over here. If you go to the layers panel, click here, you can see all of those curves. Well, now, instead of having them just filled, because at the moment they're just filled, these curves are filled, but there's no stroke applied to them. And that's what I want to add. I want to add a stroke. So I'm just going to go over here and don't want to click this top one. I want to click polyline and then hold down shift. You don't have to select all of them. You could select maybe the major ones. You could do that if you want to really reduce it down to so it's not too many curves selected because this may be quite a lot. And then you can see it's 3,400. There's quite a few there. You can't see the actual stroke color. Well, you can go down here, just select one of these tools, rectangle tool. I know it seems a bit weird, but you can do that. And then go down here and you've got the rectangle. And it just says, they're not rectangles, they're curves, but it does allow you to change the colors. If you can't see this context, all you need to do is go to view and context toolbar and show. Now here, you can leave obviously the colors if you want the colors. I'm not gonna keep them. Just going to click here and I'm going to set them all to nothing. And then you can see, of course, the original image. All the vectors are still there because what I want to now do is click here to add the stroke. So click here and you could set it to any color. You could see you could go with white, perfectly reasonable, variety of colors. Maybe you could do this multiple times in different ways. So you could build up maybe multiple lines in different colors and combine them that way. But I'm just going to go with black. Once I've got that, I can then change this. And you can see if I change this, I can push this like this so you can get, which is a bit messy, I think. So you can push it to about 0 0.3, 0 0.35, just so you can get the lines. Now, another thing you could do, you've got here, pass brushes. You can go and find loads of different options here, inks, etc. Maybe go with oils and simply just click. And with all these pass selected, they will then all fill the document and you can see what happens. You end up with this very, very, very black image, but you can go over here and again, just reduce this down and you can put it to say 0 0.45 and it's subtle, but it does create some slight variation in the lines and you can push that up obviously maybe to one or two. You don't want to push it too far because it then just fills it, makes it very, very black. Well, once you've got that, you can then go to this option here, over here in the layers with them all selected again. Just click here to effects. Just click there. And I'm just going to set that to 3D. So 3D and I can then change this. And you can see as I change that, very subtle change and it does take a bit of time to process. You can see you get this lovely sort of line, it gives a bit of depth to that. 
if that's what you want with the way you could there uh, you can see depths around here it does take a few seconds to process so click close and you can see that sort of result however let's just undo that i don't want that first i'm going to do that later just takes a few seconds to again undo all that let's just undo that okay what i want to do now is actually I'm going to merge it all together. All these things, everything here, all going to be merged into a single layer. So just go up here, select this one, and I'm just going to right click. And just down here, there's an option for, let's just see, where is it? Merge down. That's the one I want. Merge down. So merge down, merges it all back into the original layer. So that's another thing you can do. So you've got this line design. But now what you can do, there's a few steps here and you can actually repeat this a few times. You might want to do it, say, three, four times because it does create variations if you sort of do it more than once. But I'm going to go with this. And exactly the same as I got before, I can go here to Vector and Image Trace. Now, this time I'm not going to blur it. So Image Trace and you got this. Now, this time, you can actually see instead of obviously the image that you had before, where it was slightly obviously the blurring, etc. You've now got this sort of effect. And I think that creates a nice line effect as well. And click apply. And again, I'm going for edge threshold. You could vary them, of course. And also curve fitting 98% or 100%, etc. Well, now what you can do, just go over here again. And I'm just going to select this and oh, not the background. Going to go up here, just this curve. And again, you could select some of the curves. So all of them or just some of them, if it's reasonable. Now with those selected, again, what you can do is you can change things again if you want to change various things. But now I'm just going to go to effects. So just click here, effects, and this time 3D. And with that, I can now, and it takes a few seconds to process, there's a lot of, I don't know how many curves there is, there's a lot. And you can see then what happens, it generates this. Now, of course, what you can also do is you can click here, profile. So click there and you might say, oh, let's go for this one. I'm just going to quickly run through them by clicking. Different. And again, it takes a few seconds to process it. You get that slightly different design. Click this one, this profile. And of course, you can also modify other things as well. Let's just wait a few seconds to process that. Maybe just go with the standard profile or just remove the profile. And once you've got that, you can then change maybe the direction, light sources, maybe add a couple of light sources, whole range of different options there. And of course, ambient, you can change that, tweak that, maybe slightly modify that, brightens it up a bit, because it can get quite dark, because you've added obviously all this black stroke, and then you've got this, and then click close. And now, of course, I'm just going to go again up here, and I'm just going to merge visible, and then that will be merged into a single layer. Now, of course, I can then just delete all those vectors. If you don't want them anymore, if you don't need them, let's just go up here and this layer, I can just delete. I've got this image and there is the end result. Now, of course, you could do many variations again with this. As mentioned, you can also, if you want, just go here again, vector, and just use image trace again. Maybe recolor it. You could apply maybe adjustment layers. So just go to pixel, new adjustment layer. You could go here, modify exposure, all these sort of things. Maybe HSL, to change the color. So HSL, you can then just drag this, just modify it slightly, maybe a slightly redder design to create something like that, a garish purple design. That is very garish, I must admit. And maybe change saturation. So you can really make a very extreme effect. And again, you've got blend modes, you can run through those, you can see as you change that, whole range of different options there. If I go for light color, etc., you can see the result of that and close. Maybe not, I'm just gonna delete it. So you can see, do that. But again, you can always go to vector and image trace. And of course, now that's a vector and you can see the result of that. And this time you've got these lines. It's a sort of like, I don't know, 
similar to Photoshop plastic wrap, I suppose, of similar sort of effect, or maybe some of the other gallery filter effects that come with Photoshop. And you can see again, I've got this, click apply, and you could repeat the process. I'm just gonna cancel, because I wanna finish at this point. As an added bonus, this design can also be used in displacements as well. Key thing is to actually remember to have a copy of the original image stored away. You could store it in assets or just make a duplicate again at the start. Now, I've got this here. I've got this and the original. So at the moment, this one is on top. Anything that's above, it's just on top, so you can't see the original. To move it back up again, I can just select it like this and then simply just drag. And you see, I drag it up and I can place it on top. So now that slightly raised image is now beneath this. So what I can now do, I can go here to pixel and there's option here in filters and I can go down to distort and I can go to displace. Don't have to use that because there's also another option and that's in new live filter layer. And the great thing about that, it's a non-destructive effect. So go there and then go to distort and again displace. With this, you get that. You got the strength and at the moment, if I just set that and change that, nothing, nothing appears because it doesn't know what to do. So what you need to do is go down here. You've got here a red green. I'm just gonna go with that one. Could use the other one as well. Instead of load map from file, of course, if you've saved it, you could use that. Personally, I generally always go with load map from layers beneath. So that layer, the raised one, is beneath this one. So click there. And now you can see this lovely sort of distortion here applied. Again, it creates a sort of very painter-like effect as well. And again, you can modify the strength so you don't have to go full on. You could put it down to say, maybe about 49 or maybe 12, just creates a slightly jarring effect, a painter-like effect. It's not obviously full on displacement effect if you push it up like that, which of course becomes more like a looking through glass. You can just reduce that down and go for something maybe slightly lighter. And again, you could, if you want, use this as a source, of course, for using the stroke and the image trace again to create more vector designs from that to build up an even more complex design. But once you've got that, you can see you can just put it to about there and also always try out, of course, all of the different blends. You can just run through all these live filters generally come with this option here and you can just try them out. Just run through. I think that one looks color dodge, looks great. Add, overlay and so on. So you can create some very interesting designs just using that of course, display some map that you've got below this image and then just close it. It's still live. So at any point you can go to your layers panel and you can expand it out and you can see display some map and you can just simply edit it by just double clicking there. And you can see then you get this panel pop up again and you can tweak it and change it as required. Hope you found this of interest. Any thoughts or questions? Always great to hear from you. Bye.